Good morning, judges, teachers, guests, and fellow contestants. I now ask you to imagine being kicked out of the seat on the bus because of your race. Unfortunately, Rosa Parks had to endure this devastating situation, but she didn't give in. In this speech, I'll tell you about her early years, her refusal to move, the boycott, and her death and funeral. Rosa Parks was born as Rosa Louise McCulley to her parents James McCulley and Leona Edwards. When she was a small child, she had suffered from bad health. When her parents divorced, she moved with her mother to Pine Level. There she attended school until she had to drop out to care for her aging mother and grandmother. In Rosa Parks' time, black people and white people were segregated in many aspects of their lives, including public transit. Rosa recalls when she was in Pine Level, the bus took the white children to their school, but not the black children. After work on one cold December day, December 1st to be exact, Rosa Parks boarded the Cleveland Avenue bus at around 6 o'clock. She sat down in the front row seats for black people, close to the bright reserve for white people. The bus went down its normal route. The all-white spaces were filling up. The bus came to its third stop in front of Empire Theater. A lot of white passengers boarded. The bus driver asked Rosa to move to make room for the white passengers. Rosa remembers the driver saying, y'all better make a light of yourselves and let me have those seats. The other two people beside her moved, but she didn't. The bus driver asked her, why don't you stand up? She said, I don't think I should have to stand up. The bus driver asked her once again. She said, no, I'm not. His reply, well, if you don't stand up, I'm going to have to call the police and have you arrested. Her reply, you may do that. She was arrested. Edie Nixon and Clifford Dora bailed her out. From that day on, Rosa Parks was made famous by those actions. One evening, 35,000 flyers were made, announcing a bus boycott. They agreed not to go on the buses until a treat with courtesy, black drivers were hired, and until seats were handed to people on a first-come, first-served basis. The boycott lasted 351 days. Lots of buses stayed in the sheds because of lack of for 75% of all riders. The boycott was one of the biggest movements against segregation. It sparked Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to start the civil rights movement. On November 13, 1956, segregation on buses ended. The seats were now handed to people on a first-come, first-served basis. Rosa died at, at age 92 in her apartment of natural causes. In her honor, in the front seats of city buses in Montgomery, Detroit, they put black ribbons until her funeral. Her funeral service was seven hours long and held at the Greater Grace Temple Church in Detroit. Just after her death, they were in the chapel in which she lays Rosa L. Parks Freedom Chapel. Rosa Parks was called the mother of civil rights, and there's good reason for calling her that too. As you just heard, Rosa refused to stand up and give up her seat, and by doing that, she stood up for her rights. Now that I come to the end of my speech, I want to leave you with a simple question. What would you have done in Rosa Parks' situation? Thank you.